Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show, Alan, who do we got? Well, the long-term member of Halloween himself, Michael. How are what you today? We what we got. <laughs> what we got here. We're spoiled again. Oh, it's been no. a year since we were able to uh, to interview you in the back of the bus with that ever-present cigarette. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think my I, my clothes are still to have your cigarette smelling. I think it's still the same cigarette. I there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, the new album. Let's talk about it here. Yeah, you may as well. of June, twenty twenty one release. So here we are. Let's just give it some some. Let's give a date here. June eighteenth via Nuclear Blast Records. It's the Halloween's sixteenth album, of course, self titled Halloween. How did everybody decide to heal and move forward to create this album? Yeah, Michael? I don't know that that just happened on the way. I mean, we've been doing the shows, and then someone said you got to do a Pumpkins United track, <laughs> which we did. And then, yeah, you know, I mean, simple. We had these concerts and everything went so well, you know, with like people crying in the first rows and stuff. And then you had to control yourself to to, to not let it show yourself all the time, constantly. So then you had to sometimes turn around, wipe off a tear and turn around back, you know, go like, (laughs) as if nothing happened. And that just... You know, that just worked so well and it, it kept going and it was enjoyable. And so, yeah, someone said, okay, because you've done the Pumpkins United recording and you proved that you can, you will have to do an album, right? <laughs> like the, the fans said so, uh, you know, the media said so, record company said so, and management said so. And then we said, so, yes, uh, you know, as well, fine. Okay, album. <laughs> that's how it came about but for, for those 30 years that you guys were apart on and off what what was the relationship like was it hard to get back together was there a lot of mending of the fences like jimmy alluded to or, or you guys always stayed in touch and remained friends no the, the michael kiske and me we we had never talked ever since back then wow. and i've i've sometimes um had the idea to just call him because i had his number still obviously and then uh, I, I just wanted to make amends or, you know, try and, and ask, like, how are you? You know, sorry about what happened and all this shit. And then can we talk or whatever? But then I always felt like, OK, you're feeling good. You don't know if he's feeling good. And I mean, this is kind of like a call of a certain magnitude. And so I always chickened out. It was always like, no, you're not going to call him now. And he said that that he had similar moment so maybe he would have just called but for 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 what fuck's sake like you know i'm the one who got fired and i'm supposed to call him and and so it went on for decades you know <laughs> and then we were i think both happy when we met at the metal fest france which was like a, um, a festival where he was out with uh, uh what's the name avantasia Mm-hmm. And yeah, there there were some ten minutes that we had to meet and talk quickly. Like I had a Jackie Daniels Coca Cola in one hand while I was pouring another one with the other hand, and I had a cigarette in the right hand, and I lit up a cigarette in the left hand as well. And then I <laughs> realized how fucking stupid that must feel. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, I mean, you look great. I'm 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 happy. You're you're fine. You you look good. Uh, uh, nice outfit, uh, uh, you know, what What was that thing that you would be angry about with me uh, 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 where, where you said you could possibly forgive me or, or so? And he said, I, I don't know, maybe I've already forgiven you, I don't know. <laughs> and then I said, hey man, that's so cool, you know, I'm so happy to see you and healthy and everything. And he said, yeah, you know, maybe we should talk another time when you're not so drunk. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah pretty much, pretty I'm, I'm, I'm much not drunk, it. asshole, but no, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we talk another time. Uh, you know, so um, that. Then we had a Skype call and, and talked about Garden the World and what 
have you and what has he and yeah that was that and so it, it just kind of grew together and we were all like mesmerized and we were kind of like uh, uh, thrilled in a way and and always like with a with a careful eye you know could there be something coming out of the woodwork you know that that would like suddenly be very unpleasant something that that no one would reckon with and what's going to happen next and when when is he going to hit me like real mean again with something <laughs> everybody thought right but nothing happened and it was all good and 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 we have that i don't know we we have that feel to to care for each other you know not to mistreat each other like we've done it's kind of came along like them with their gamma rays and with their unisonics and their Halloweens. Everyone was busy doing something, putting something on the way in the meantime. And then you got this together thing going and, and, and why hurt each other? It's, it's so strange, you know, you, you don't really want to. We also don't know how that came about back then. Yeah, so many uh, years ago. The Kiska said maybe it was demons or something, you know, in the in the uh, evil rearm didn't want us to get along. And that's how it failed. It was like a vicious cycle. And I don't know. I, I, I didn't want any of that, you know. Yeah, it's called the maturing, getting older and uh, time time heals all wounds. So, yeah, uh, nice rush T-shirt, by the way. Oh, thank I, you. Thank you. Listen to that album with like the red logo was the first one, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, working, yeah, yeah. Working, working man. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to try to, I, we've heard the album, Ugh. and I'm going to try to summarize this. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to try to summarize this in one sentence. A okay. European, European power metal opera with a classic vibe and new twists. I thought you'd say powerhouse. Now I'm disappointed. <laughs> Throw in powerhouse. A European powerhouse metal opera with a classic vibe and new twists. We did try to put some queen parts into it. <laughs> well, and you so, had the guys to do it, right? Yeah, and, and uh, Kai Hansen, he also has the software. He has like a Brian May audio plug-in, which he also used wherever he could. And yeah, that's the, 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 the queen aspect of it that we always uh, forget to mention uh, in the past. And, and there's a bit of Judas Priest in there because I wanted to have a look if, if maybe I can mimic some of, of their parts or, or things they are known for from like real old albums or something somewhere along the middle. Because when they did their their last album the, the, the fire power it was uh it was so that that like everybody was raving about it and we had that inside joke in halloween where we said ah oh, and for the, the next album uh, we, we were gonna do another judas priest record <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that was merely a joke but i i tried to keep the idea and say like that's something you always wanted you know mimic priest riffs or stuff and, and put that in there because it's so compatible with with the halloween stuff and so i tried and so we no. had we had kind of workshop time going for i don't know two and a half months of songwriting when whenever someone would have started i mean there were some people who who started in in december the year prior i started in february and i went on for two and a half months when I got the three tracks finished and I said, I'm, I'm not going to do much more than that. And that's it. And I, I try to optimize that stuff as it stands. And then soon in April, we would already have like the meeting where like we would get together and, and, and play each other stuff to each other. Right. Now you got some, some, some time to make another question. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 to me, and I, sorry, Alan, I just wanted to know Michael Kiski. I mean, I, I don't see he has any songwriting credits. Is it because you just, everybody pooled all the best songs together and then you just said, okay, are these ones are better than yours or maybe he just wasn't involved. Uh, maybe he didn't want to be involved. I don't know. Mm. It was a bit like that with uh, songwriting capabilities. Uh, I, 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 I guess I quit for this time 
I got so many ideas, but it doesn't sound so much like Halloween. It would have been more like uh, a poppy or country stuff or something, the way I understood. <laughs> that it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's put to rest along the way for now, something like that. He said, and then that was okay because like we 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 had enough other stuff, right? And uh, I guess after all that time, you know, being involved in a full-fledged Halloween production as this. He had enough to do, you know, also to to uh, arrange with the Darius, like which parts, whoever I want to sing at best. And so I guess that already was like a plethora of, of, of things to be done, which would have been okay with without yet uh, one of his own tracks need, needing to be produced or whatever and, and then eventually i don't know whatever he comes up with in the future you know? and how did the COVID situation affect this uh, this recording you're, you're getting together and record luckily we were finished almost uh, when 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 it uh, uh, kicked in and we were here on the island with the Kiske and the Darius and me, and we were finishing what needed to get finished. And it was basically all of the vocals. And they've done lots of vocals here while the Kiske was still here. Then he went back home. And I don't know if he recorded most of the remaining stuff himself or if he somehow did that somewhere else or with the Charlie, but like, Majority of stuff was done here, and we we finished all the guitar parts and stuff. And Darius would sing what was needed, uh, obviously in his own very studio. Okay. I don't, I don't even know when the when the process was concluded completely. I, I I can't say, but it was sometime in the when when the lockdowns were going on. And one night, I had to stay in the studio at the studio, because. My taxi driver, he, he wasn't uh, permitted to leave his um, town. It was was blocked by local police in the streets. And they said, oh, wow. no, 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 you're not going elsewhere here this night. And so I had to stay there over the night. I was so cold, you know. First, I, <laughs> I lay down and I felt like, you know, when was the last time you, you took a, a you, you, you had, had like an overnight experience somewhere. And that was ages ago, and I, I felt so insecure, you know. And I, I was, I was, I was bereft of my personal freedom, and I was, uh, oh my God! And then I fell asleep, and I woke up again because it was so freaking cold. <laughs> I, I said, you, you, you better take that that cover that's over there, and and then, yeah. And then it was morning, and someone came and woke me up and said, like, yeah, well, I went home did my stuff and came back in the evening as it was allowed. It was like business measures and no one asked. And so then I've, I've done the stuff and that's it. My, Michael, how would you like, okay, I described it in one sentence. And how would you <laughs> summarize it in one sentence? Because I heard this album and I, I really trying to figure out if somebody asked me what, how would you describe it in one sentence, this new uh, album? The album is, is, is magic and some kind of nuclear blast, in a way. Because it's it's magic from from the way it comes across, the way it sounds, and what it is, and the the, the sound created by Charlie Baufeind and the and the Roland Print. Analog too, right? Analog. Yeah, totally, completely. Everything was uh, was transferred to analog tape or whatever. And mixed by analog means, the the, the the print has like some purely analog equipment there in his Valhalla studios in New York, and yeah, they they were they were this is, they had that um, internet connection whatever, so so they could do it at the same time instantly. They could do changes and listen back to what would be different, and that took quite some time. We we had like three approaches. To a mix or maybe four, I don't know. But then the the third approach uh, was the final one, and we we had a few great results before. And then someone said, "Oh, but there's some one kilohertz missing in in all the mix or whatever, or perceivably so, and stuff." And then we had the final mix, and that's what you know now. 
<laughs> well, yeah, it's a great album. I mean, you know, just the, the title itself, Simply Halloween. We're far, far away from Pink Bubbles Go Ape. It's simple. It's Halloween. And, and then the opening track with Out for the Glory. I mean, what a way to start the album. It's, it's so powerful. And you've got everything. It sets a tone for the rest of the album, I think. Oh, thanks. I, I, I was hoping so. But then I've been working my ass off that melody existed another 15 years before, after I had seen that uh, incons- Inconvenient Truth of the Mr. Al Gore. I had finished watching it, and suddenly I had that melody. Yeah. But it was called the, the Inconvenient Truth, and I thought, what a stupid word to end the line with. That can't go, <laughs> so you, you've got to find a different title for that melody. Right. And, and so ever since it's been there and, and uh, I, I tried to do something with it during the Seven Sinners period, but it didn't quite come along the way we wanted. It. And there was always one chord in the chorus that I didn't like. And I thought, this is so cheesy. This is so phony. It's a great melody. You know, it's going to work, but just how? And then eventually I, I changed one chord and it's the way you know it now. Yeah. You, you and, know and, yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what I love about this album. Every song, there's vocals and different vocals, and Kiske and then Darius, and they're trading off back and forth. It's complex, yet it's familiar, you know? Mm. I, I just think you really, guys, you guys did a great job. Fear of the Fallen, it sounds like something out of straight out of hell, best times. Um, trade-offs, you know, between the two singers, mass pollution, another Darius classic. Yeah, the solos are amazing. The Guitar solos, solos are amazing. The melodies pollution. are amazing. I'm really impressed here. I think it's the, you the guys. The solos are as crazy as they used to be on the Kipa albums. Not kind of like <laughs> psychotic, ex, uh, expressionist, whatever crazy solos, but still good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think even the Sasha has a vocal line on best time like like um, I, I i guess he's on there somewhere singing something as well <laughs> and robot king wow a robot, yeah, robot. i was really impressed with the robot king i, I thought the robot king was a stunning it was kind of like skyfall in a way but more aggressive it's a little bit shorter as well i had to keep it short i uh, it had an amazing intro i'm going to keep for one of any and, other and, and seven minutes as keeping it short. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought so, but like what, what I had laid out there was around 12 minutes, and I was like, that doesn't go. So I cut the freaking uh, intro. The the intro I had already lost because like I, I deleted some recorded versions on my computer, my computer, and um, then I was like, uh, now you deleted what you've done in the last one and a half weeks. You oh, know. no. And luckily, I had a copy uh, to, to like a certain degree of all that and a stereo file that I had recorded for my, my self-delectation. And uh, I, I could recreate the whole shit because I, I took it from Dropbox, you know, Dropbox mm-hmm. to the rescue. And then <laughs> there was some temporary file there where I could reconstruct all that stuff. And then after all... It was too long, and I went like, "Okay, now you're gonna cut short all the parts. Like you, you're gonna you're gonna cut the the, the second uh, bridge. I don't know why I say cut. It's cut, right? And then, um, yeah, and suddenly it was just seven minutes. But why do you like that track so much? Tell me. I like it because I love the complexity of of Halloween. It, it reminds me of the first two albums, but it has the aggression of the Darius era. So it's a con- the whole album is a combination of all eras. And I think that's, that's what you're aiming for. And in fact, for, for the first riff, I was thinking classic priest with some uh, flying V of KK Downing or whatever, whatever martial sound they would have used there. And then suddenly it, it turns into like a twin vocal frenzy, which reminds me more of Uli John Ross and the old Scorpions. And then when the when the Darius kicks in in the vocals, I think of the Klaus Meine really, you know, on some yeah. I don't know whatever they did on in trance or Virgin Killer or something. And then I thought, interesting, interesting the way it proceeds. And then I, I had to cut it all down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's that small uh, that slow instrumental part. I thought, you know, for for people as a guidance, if they're interested, I was thinking first Peter Gabriel solo record 
with Andy Summers playing some nice melodies, you know. And like I thought, it took me a week to put the freaking tempos into place there for that part. And the tempo changes and coming out of it into the chorus again, like what, what kind of fucking scale do you need for this, you know. And yeah, well, thanks. I, I hope you like it. Great. <laughs> yeah, the the whole album. I mean, it's just classic Halloween, and you've got you got everything that you need. Uh, you know, you got the Kiski, you've got Darius, you got Hanson uh, for the vocals. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just a joy. And everybody that saw you on tour, it's it's. They, I, I understand why they wanted you guys to do an album because everything that everybody wants is right here on this album. And it somehow fell into place. Like that story I told other people uh, is like uh, before we had that meeting for for comparing the demos. The the Darius and me we went down on a bench in front of the hotel, uh, where on the next day it was supposed to happen. And he was like, you know, do you want to hear my new tracks on my phone? <laughs> and I put on the headphones, listened, and I said, uh huh. So, so, so someone had like an avalanche and and tsunami of good ideas. Right? <laughs> So did I, you know, do you care listening to my tracks here on my iPhone? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then uh, we were like, um, it seems we're going to have a good album if the other guys uh, also came up with some great stuff that we don't know yet. And so it was. Yeah. And then yeah. we were pretty confident and we were like, you know, manager was going like, oh, but we need some keeper stuff. And, and, you know, can't you write something like I want out or so? And yeah, but you know, we got everything already. We got everything. And then eventually he also got what he wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, it, he got that, the it, call and he got the best time and, and then that was it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. You know, um, I, I, I don't know. I guess because every, Hansen's there and Kiske is there and Darius is there and all you guys are there supporting them. It just has a little bit of every era and you probably know more if it's got a little judas priest riff in there that you thought of but it really if i was to review this album i'd say this is like you know way up high in the catalog of uh you know halloween uh time will tell if it will topple the keeper of the seven keys albums but you know i think this is way up there in in the catalog you know some good quality in the production it mm. sounds good, Matt. It sounds really good. Okay. I really don't have that many expectations. You know, people are used to everything that's old and what they're used to. You know, I don't really think it's going to do like a big breakout or whatever, you know, but at least it's a nice positive experience we had yes. together. Yes. Of yeah. sorts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not overdo things. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Let's, the... keep it. Let's keep it low key. All right. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, I know you got another interview, uh, June eighteenth, via Nuclear Blast. It's coming out. Pre-order now, I guess. Right. Great and album tour. cover. And the tour. What's what's going to happen? Is there going to be a tour? Do you know? We uh, we ain't politicians yet, so I don't know what's the plan for whatever. We have the tour scheduled for next year. Whatever may come, I, I, I don't know how, but then, you know, eventually we're going to have to do like some rehearsals and, and, and get the stuff rehearsed so we can present it live. If there's going to be a tour over there, it, next year over there, I mean, and yeah, then yeah. whatever, hopefully, yes, by whatever means, you know, I'm, I'm not against it. Thank you for your time. A great album. The high quality that we come to expect from Halloween. And uh, just, a, 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 I mean, for me, this is the album of the year so far. This is going to be hard to beat uh, when it comes to our top 10 at the end of the year, as far as I'm the, concerned. So the, the, the Halloween album of the year. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Michael. Thank you so much again. Michael, for thank time. you for your time. Yes. Thanks for your interest in everything. And thanks for the support that goes out to the fans. And everyone who tries so very hard to to support us and, and follow us and whatever. Thanks so much. Of course, well. without you, none of this would, etc., etc. <laughs> All right, Michael, thank you so much. Thank have you. Have a, nice have a great day. day.